reading, our scripture reading for this morning is from Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, and it is chapter 16, starting at verse 21. But as we prepare to hear God's word, let us again turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, pour out your spirit upon us. That as we receive your word, read and proclaimed, sung and prayed, your word may enter our hearts and take root and grow and bear fruit for your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. So listen now for the word of the Lord as it comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day, he raised. And then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. So Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, for you are a stumbling block to me. You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I imagine that you have heard the words, take up your cross and deny yourself and follow me at least a few times in your life. And those are challenging words, aren't they? Maybe even harsh words for us to hear. And Peter, stormy, impetuous, stone-headed Peter, does not want to hear it. Now, just a few verses earlier in Matthew's Gospel, Peter, in a flash of insight, when asked by Jesus, who do you say I am, has answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. But now, when Jesus begins to explain to Peter and to the disciples what that will look like, what it will mean, the sacrifices it will entail, Peter doesn't want to hear it. Deny yourself, take up your cross, lose your life. Did you notice that when Peter is so distressed about Jesus' talk about going to Jerusalem and suffering and dying on the cross, and he tries to stop him, Jesus responds, get behind me. Behind me. Follow me. That is the place for disciples. For in Jesus' day, rabbis taught as they walked and talked along the way, and their disciples followed them, literally going from place to place with them, but always following them. To say that we follow Jesus is to live a cross-shaped life, a life of losing your life in order to find it. And that is what a life of discipleship looks like in large and small ways. Perhaps, at points in your faith life, you have had a moment of clarity like Peter's, but about the church, those moments where you say, this is what church is supposed to be like. This is where Christ rules in our hearts, where we make decisions based on his life and teachings, a place of caring and community and welcome. But if we are honest, we might say that there have also been times when church has not been that. Nadia Boltz-Weber is a Lutheran pastor, and she is 
about six foot tall and she has full sleeve tattoos on both arms and she is a recovering alcoholic and she believes very firmly in telling the truth. Even when it makes people uncomfortable, even when it makes ourselves uncomfortable. And so at the brunch for newcomers who are interested in joining her church, after the talk about what time Sunday school is and what the mission project is and where the nursery is, she tells them, welcome to our church. We will probably disappoint you. And I would say she is startlingly honest in saying that, but that is also not probably the evangelism tool I would use if I were the pastor in that church. But she's right. Sometimes the church does disappoint. The church is to be a community of faith and love and hope and witness. If it disappoints us, maybe that's because we are more interested in the church filling our needs than in being the body of Christ to the world. When Jesus talks about taking up our crosses, he is not talking about taking on suffering as a way to make us holy or better or even to be able to humble brag about it on Facebook about all of the things we have taken on and are doing. Rather, in following Christ, we make a choice to accept the challenge of the cross or to seek to escape it. In choosing the cross, Jesus was not seeking to elevate all suffering, nor was he using the cross to condone oppression and violence. Rather, Jesus was accepting the cross out of radical love for God and for humanity. And the call to deny oneself is not a call to self-harm or neglect. Rather, it is a giving up, a letting go of all the things that get in the way of our following God. All of the things that we place in front of us rather than Christ. And that is true for churches as well as individuals. We must be careful in discernment to let go of things whose sole purpose is to make us comfortable or that we think will bring us back to normal or the way we used to be. In this new COVID-19 world, living into a new way of being the church might be part of denying ourselves, of letting go of some of the things that we love, being inside to worship, being able to sing wholeheartedly the hymns that we have known all our lives. But perhaps it is a way of losing our life in order to gain it again. A way of letting go in order to be the church in this time and this place. On this Sunday, the Episcopal Church holds up and remembers the life of Jonathan Daniels. An Episcopal priest, he was educated down at VMI, where he was valedictorian of his class. In August of 1965, Daniels went to Alabama, and after being put in jail for being part of a picket line, when he was released, he and four friends went to a small store to get a coat. As they were entering the store, Ruby Sales, a 16-year-old girl, was at the front of the group, and she started to walk in through the door of the store, and she was greeted with a man with a shotgun. She was directly in his line of fire, and he began cursing her, a black woman, for having the nerve to enter a store. Jonathan pushed her to one side, and he was killed instantly. He laid down his life so that she might have hers. So my question is, what are we willing to lay down in order to follow Jesus? Or to ask it another way, what are we holding on to so tightly that it gets in the way of our following Christ and where Christ is leading us? 
Nod you both, Weber, that Lutheran pastor who warned newcomers about the church disappointing them, goes on to say this about the church and its potential new members. When we've been honest with them about how we will eventually disappoint them, we ask them to decide if they are going to stick around after that happens. Because if you leave because the church has disappointed you, you will miss the way that God's grace fills the cracks left behind by our brokenness. The kingdom of God is always breaking in. Always breaking in, even in, or maybe especially in this time, in the spaces left by our not perfectness, in the gaps left by our sin and sorrow, in the space made as we physical distance. To deny ourselves is to acknowledge our sin and our brokenness, but also to lose ourselves in the service of compassion as the body of Christ. To love others as Christ has loved us. For to be a disciple is to follow Christ, even when that way leads to the cross. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I do not know what crosses may arise before me, but give me courage to resist systems of injustice, strength to reject structures of oppression, and wisdom to unmask powers of evil, that I may live as a faithful disciple whose life belongs to you. Amen.